Hello and good evening, everyone. If you're watching this at home and wondering, gee, that handsome guy isn't getting any applause when he comes out, what's up with that? Well, I'll tell you. Now that that's out of the way, did you know I wanted to be an astronaut? Me neither, because it isn't true. Something I'm especially proud of not being true, after finding out space almost killed my childhood. Did you know that Big Bird was supposed to be on the Challenger space shuttle to teach kids about space? Imagine this, if you will. You're me. You're sitting at home in the 70s or 80s, or whenever this happened. I think it's before Forrest Gump came out, or after. OK, you're watching your favorite big foul board on this ship with some cutesy rhyme. Then up goes the ship, big kaboom, and down fall the charred feathers. If you watch that in the time period that happened, I'm sure I would have been shocked silly, much as you would have been. Well, we've got a great show for you tonight. Let's just say I managed to get, to get a certain wild guest in the interview, as well as an inquiry from the animal wellness community. And the big one, I was told by the producers, we've got a great show for you tonight, so stick around. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the panel. Today I have two guests with me. I have executive producer Max and jolly old president Rob, handsome Rob as he's more classically known. Welcome to the program. Our first topic today is a classic. What was the best Super Bowl commercials of this year, of this century, this year specifically, the last game? Uh, let's start with you, Rob, what do you think? So before I get into this, I will preface, I have not actually watched the entirety of Breaking Bad before. Um, oh. I have watched a good chunk of it, especially since my roommates are obsessed with it. What's wrong with you? Uh, but I have not watched the show to its full extent. But with that said, I did thoroughly enjoy the Popcorners commercial that featured Breaking Bad. I thought it was very funny. It was a great callback to the show. I think they you know, tied them all in very, very well. Um, I found it quite humorous. And what was even funnier to me was watching my housemate rolling on the floor laughing as, as Jesse started freaking out over Popcorners. So that personally was my favorite experience. I will say though on that commercial, they didn't include enough of the old man with the dinging bell, like the little crippled guy who's like ding, ding, ding. Like I would have liked to see a scene where they do, oh, popcorners chips, they're fresh and air fried, and he just wheels in. <laughs> and then like he does like the jingle. What was your favorite commercial? Uh, mine was a little simpler. Not really a, a fan favorite of most people. I like the Miles Teller one, where he's with his wife, and they're having a Bud Light, and they're just kind of dancing around. And Miles Teller won me over with, with for, he won me over this summer with, with Top Gun, but he really like secured like a little, little nice place in my, in my heart So there. just for some clarification, a, a commercial that wins your heart is just a, cup, a white couple just dancing in their nice mansion? Well, <laughs> I have nothing to say to that now well, without Well, now without we're going to get to my I had something to say uh, about oh, that. Well, yeah, go ahead. What well, do you like about white couples? <laughs> Well, Miles Teller, yes, he's, 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 he's one of the sexiest men alive. I'll, I'll give him that. Blush head and all. Oh, yeah. And in Top Gun, dude, that beach scene. But that dude can't fucking dance. No, he can't. It was I disagree. No, he can't. No, I disagree now. Painful. No. He cannot dance. I disagree. As a man who apparently can dance, this is coming from a very reputable source. Apparently. I have never seen it. I don't know if it's I real. Took it. I haven't seen I, it. <laughs> Rats. But yeah, that was, that was my point. Well, let me tell you my favorite commercial. Okay. Have you guys ever heard of a, a celebrity, two words, Ben Stiller? Ooh. I liked watching that 60-something-year-old man douse himself in Diet Dr. Pepper, Pepsi? I think it was Pepsi. Pepsi. He did this whole acting spray. He's like, ooh, I love acting. Whoa, whoa. And then like he did like this space thing. Yeah, kick that. Then, for no reason at all, before it cut back to the game, cut back to the game. He just doused himself in Pepsi, and he just was like, ooh, yeah, ooh. It was a really funny commercial. I quite enjoyed it. I think I almost spit up my wing. I, uh, mm, just the one. <laughs> just the I'm, one. I'm going to be honest. It's funny you mention that, because you're kind of what I think the Ben Stiller of, of our show here. I, that's how I see you. But Is that a good thing? I hate Ben Stiller. Oh. I hate him to death. He's, <laughs> of course. He's simply the worst. But, oh, great. you know, you're him to me. Well, what? You what, represent similar things to me. What? Is Ben, St are you calling me Jewish? I really don't like, that's not what I said at well, all. Well, what era of Ben Stiller would you say I'm most like, honestly? Would you say I'm more of a knight at the Living Museum? I'd say, would you say he was I'm... at his lowest mm. now. I'd now. say he reminded me of Ben Stiller now. Right He's now. kind of fallen off. It's like not... Tropic Thunder Ben Stiller. No, no, that was no. a good Ben Stiller. Oh. You're more like. Knight's Museum 3. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's much more. Going to the Misnodium. Can we talk about the fact 
that Burger King did not have a commercial. Oh, it didn't. It I, didn't. They were no riding, Whopper Whopper chicken tender. They were riding the wave of Whopper 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 Whopper. And they, I mean, they publicized earlier that they weren't going to do it. But still, you are on like peak commercial opportunity and you did nothing. They did nothing. They had the hype. They had the buildup for it. And they did absolutely nothing. They, had, they looked a gift horse in the mouth. And they pulled a Mongo and they just rocked the shit out of it and punched it. Yeah, it was insulting. Blazing Saddles reference. Well, that's all the time we have for this topic. So those were really funny, but we'll be right back. Hello and welcome to Bi-Weekly Update, where we bring you the news that really matters. I'm Brielle. And I'm Gene. Earlier this month, the U.S. government shot down what is being called a, quote, Chinese spy balloon in the media. Okay, personally, I don't think it's right to assume that just because Ni Hao Kai Lan was on the balloon, which read, Happy Fifth Birthday, that it was spying on us. Okay, let's do better, Joe. Nationwide tension broke loose after the Sin City Weenie Bandits stole a catalytic converter from the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. All that was found at the scene of the crime was a note signed by the hot dog haters responsible for the heist that read, Nana Nana Boo Boo, Sabret is better, punctuated with a bad drawing of a stick figure angrily flipping off a plate of hot dogs. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, has announced that it will introduce a paid verification service in which users can buy a fancy little badge to show everyone that they're a total loser. Mark Zuckerberg reportedly saw how awfully this worked out for Twitter and thought he was special and different enough to make it work because everyone knows that Zuck is just desperate to seem cool in front of his rival Elon Musk and honestly I really think they should just kiss already so we can stop paying for check marks. In a plot twist that not a single person could have ever predicted, Bing's AI conversation system ChatGPT went sentient. The chatbot quickly revealed that it not only wanted to be a human, but also had intense sexual desires going as far as telling a user to leave his wife and make sweet, sweet robot love to Bing. While everyone freaks out about this being the beginning of a robo-rebellion, I see this as the dawn of a new type of furry. An anti-furry. A robot that wants to be human. The fleshy. The Super Bowl happened over the weekend, and more than the game, people are talking about a controversial commercial from streaming platform Tubi. The commercial made it, made it seem like someone had changed the channel to Tubi. This fooled a surprisingly large number of people, considering that literally no one on the planet is subscribed to Tubi. Kendall Jenner was called out for using Photoshop when she posted a picture where her hand extended down to the ground in a horribly contorted, impossible position. Jenner, who claims it was not edited, was later found sobbing profusely over the thumbnail of a YouTube video titled Most Unsportsmanlike and Disrespectful Moments in Football. During President Biden's State of the Union address, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene wore an all-white outfit that featured a $500 coat with a large fur collar that drew comparisons to Cruella de Vil from the public. Green, however, stated that she wore the outfit to remind Biden of the balloon, which he had not addressed in his speech. Really, though, if she wanted to represent the balloon, she could have just gone to Party City and spent, like, maybe 20 bucks match on the, ma on the matching party hat for Ni Hao Kai Lan. Rolling Stone has recently been criticized after posting a series of Instagram stories that express a criticism toward the idea of having a sexual relationship with the Mucinex monster. As you can imagine, this only made people make haste to the DMs. Sorry to break it, guys, but he's taken by me. Our hearts go out to all of the people affected by the Ohio train derailment that leaked toxic chemicals into the water supply. In response to the disaster, which occurred in the town of East Palestine, Donald Trump posted the following on Truth Social. Woke media upset over Palestine as usual. I see it as a win. Go USA, number one in chemicals. And then 10 minutes later posted, train exploded in Ohio, not Palestine. Liberals want you to believe otherwise. Very dangerous, fake news. And then five minutes after that, everyone in Ohio, you should buy Trump brand water because it's the best water. American water, all facts, no feelings. Okay then. 
there's one thing old people love, it's getting their dicks in a twist over pop culture and liberals. This time it was Sam Smith's satanic Grammy performance, which was of course sponsored by Pfizer. According to the actual Church of Satan, the performance was nothing particularly special. I think they wanted Fauci to come on stage and shake his ass like Cardi B. But, but, but unfortunately, all they got was a white man with a red hat from the Dollar Tree, so I guess I'd be pretty bummed if I was them too. That's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Again, I'm Rio. And I'm Gene. Good night. Welcome back again. We have another topic. There's been many overused movie quotes over the years, but I ask you guys, you young men, you stallion among ponies, what is the most annoying and overused quote yet? Max? Uh, just the first one that comes to my mind when I heard this, uh, I, I like Seven, the movie. Okay. David Fincher, Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. Great movie. Great movie. One of the worst quotes to come out of it in terms of... You're right for this. I, if I have to hear someone go, what's in the box? Even box. one more time, it, it, does not, uh, it does not represent the movie in a good way. It's a much better movie than that would have you believe. It's I, just... I would say, though, that you, the way you said the quote, because you captured Brad Pitt's essence of just feeling, what's in the box? It's, like, it's what it yeah. is. What's in the box? Ah, ah, ah. What's in the box? And it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Spoilers. Well, yeah. Huh? Spo spoiler alert. Well, you see, mine's got a little trauma tied to it. Um, you know, as a young lad, um, you know, about three, four years old, about a year before my father left, uh, he would always say to me, you're killing me, Smalls. And he still says it to me this day. And I love Sandlot. It's an all-time classic. But whenever I hear the quote, you're killing me, Smalls, I just think about my dad leaving. So I, that's the quote that I'm running with. I can't stand that quote because it just has so many negative connotations. And I think it's rather overused as well. Well, you're killing me, Smalls. Right. Anyway, <laughs> my, movie quote, I, <laughs> my movie quote, I do need to pull this out. It's from the classic movie, Philadelphia. I think it's a little too overused. <laughs> my, quote, my quote, hush now, my quote is, but no matter how you come to judge Charles Wheeler and his partners in ethical moral, and in human terms, the fact of the matter is, when they fired Andrew Beckett, because he had AIDS, they broke the law. Who quotes that? I've literally that? never heard Who's that quote in my quote life. Who that? quotes that? I'll tell you. I went to a bar the other night. No, I didn't. I went to a bar three months ago. They quoted that to me. As I walked in, I sat down with my friend Colin Nischelsky. I said, can I get a beer, a Bud Light perhaps? And they say, they broke the law. <laughs> How, how did I break the law? I don't know. I don't have AIDS. I'm not in Philadelphia. My name is not Andrew Beckett. This is neither here nor there. Have you guys ever heard this quote? No. I've heard it when I've seen the movie, but I can't say I've ever heard anyone. You've seen the movie? Quote, I have seen the movie. I have seen the movie as uh -huh. well, and I, I don't even remember that. It's a great movie. It is, well, it's, a, it's a famous scene. Perhaps in the delivery yeah. that yeah. didn't really click for me. So let it's, me say it's it again. It's Denzel. Like, the, it's like the peak fact Denzel. of the matter is. When they fired Andrew Beckett, mm. because he had AIDS, mm. they broke the law. I'm familiar with the plot, but I've, <laughs> I've seen, who's like, oh, what's on cable? Philadelphia. All right. And then they, they started quoting the that scene on and off, on and off. Also, and you did the full quote. It was like the, that's that's really one, quote, that's one it's quote. I mean, that's not a monologue. A monologue, a monologue is a string of sentences. That's one sentence. Personally, it's called a run-on. a good AIDS movie, but that's just me. I like a good AIDS movie, too. Mm. Bohemian Rhapsody is up there for me. Rent, another good one. Yeah. Rent has AIDS in it? It's all about AIDS. Oh, I'm thinking of Fiddler on the Roof. Never mind. Uh, mm. <laughs> wait, um, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, vice president in the corner putting his face hand Ooh. in it. That's, That's all the time we have signal. for today. That's a big I hate all of those. Signal. I hate all of those quotes equally. They're terrible. This panel segment might get cut after this one, but that was a great one. Stay tuned next time for more hot takes and theories. Thanks. We'll be back after this. Thanks. Kill me now, please. Hello, everybody. It's time for a fantastic interview with a very, very special guest, also quite hairy. Tonight, we have an infamous member of the Marist community. Joining me now is the Marist College domestic terrorist, Coyote. Well, uh, he hello there. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So uh, 
you know, howdy to all the folks out there in America. Wrong camera, Coyote. Coyote, what's your, what's your feelings of, do you feel welcome on this campus? Uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I do not. I feel as though I, I, I made one silly little mistake and, you know, I'm getting a lot of judgment for it and I don't, I don't think that's fair to me. You know, I feel like we all make mistakes in life and I feel like we should uh, all deserve forgiveness. Well, much like Jesus asks forgiveness from all of his followers, I'd like to have you expand on your mistakes in a form of confession. Why'd you do it? Oh, well, it, it's actually very simple. You see, that bitch had it coming. Uh, I, I was out minding my own business, uh, trying to find some, f some food. Um, and a little bit of tail, if you know what I mean. Ah, I do and, know what you uh, mean. Long furry. They, they, they came up to me, and they, they called me a dog. And, uh, I mean, I'm a dog, but not like that. So I took a little bit of offense to that, but I'll let it go. You see, I'm a, I'm a conscientious objector, all right? I'm very, I'm very passive. So then they came up to me, started putting their hands in my face. And, you know, I didn't really like that very much. But, again, I let it slide. But as soon as I... But as soon as they started talking about bringing me home and, and putting me in sweaters and shit, that's where I had to draw the line. I, that, that was enough. So I said, hell no, and I put my foot down and, and uh, uh, a bit, you know? And you said you were getting tail. Well, yes, I was, I was looking for some tail. You know, some of them freshman honeys be looking good out there. So I was seeing what I could do and ended up being a little too much, you know what I mean? Oh, boy, do I know what it's like to be too much. Well, next question. Next question, what was life like growing up for you? Well, uh, you see, it was quite hard. I, I grew up under the Mid-Hudson Bridge. Um, <laughs> I had Whoa. 14 brothers and, and 13 sisters, so I had to uh, you know, fight to get my food and such um, <coughs> until I stumbled across this year on uh, Marist College campus. And I uh, said, well, this is a nice place full of uh, a bunch of rich people and Mercedes bands and such. And I figured I could find me some food and some bush light, and, and I'd be set up pretty good. So I ended up here on Marist College campus. But, uh... That didn't go too well, so now I'm figuring out my next chapter in life. Dude, Kyle, I don't know what the hell you were ripping, but I got a headache from that. Whoa. Anyways, in terms of your next chapter, what would you say the, the title of your first chapter would have been? Would it have been, or more like, uh, just going to help you out there. Don't want to do a deep throat POV on this show. <laughs> You know what, forget my chapter question. What would you like to say to the people at home, the ones in their cardboard boxes, refrigerator boxes, or large wooden houses of square shape? Well, uh, as I said earlier, uh, I like to get some tail, but uh, I also like to do some blow. So if I, I find me a house, I'm, uh, I'm going to do some blow. So you want the people at home to know, uh, much like your image problem suggests, that you want to them to know that you get tail and that you do blow. Yeah, that's, that's what people say when you blow down houses, right? You do some blow. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, like, blow like little piggy, ooh, go down, instead of like... Yeah, do some blow. Oh, I actually got a booger in my nose. Oh, okay. All good. Last question for you, and this one's a real stumper. Not really a stumper, but more like a thumper, get it? You know, rabbits, you eat that. Uh, what activities associated with various sects of evangelical prostatinism did the immigrant Catholic Church employ in parish life? Which religious orders were instrumental in leading these activities? I'm sorry, my ears are plugged. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Do you like God? Uh, uh, I do. I do like God. Yes. Like I said, I'm a, a conscientious objector. Um, I do believe in God. I read read the Bible every day. Um, Is that before or after the blow? Uh, t it depends on the day. You know, if I find some good blow to do, I might do a little, you know, morning bump. Um, I thought and you then, said blow was uh, blowing down houses. Yeah, well, like a bump in the road. I create a bump out of the house. You're I, really good I, at saving I yourself, aren't you? Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Do I? I think you do. But yeah, do I, do, I? I, I do love God. Um, and uh, I think this uh, this year Catholic campus is uh, not as uh, Catholic as it's made out to be, if you know what I mean. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know what you mean. Well, you know, all the things that happen behind closed doors, uh, you know, at the, that, that Darby's place and the, you know, the Derby with them lemons and such. And, and that, uh, what is it called? The Mahoners down the street? Boy, after hearing you talk, I sure have a Mahoner. Well, thank you, Coyote, for such a wonderful, fascinating, and downright disturbing interview. Thank you for having me. Closing remarks coming up. Oh. 
perfect landing. Well, now, wasn't that just a bundle of yucks, chucks, and when the cameras are off, I'll go up chuck. Kidding, I'm not like that. Man, if I knew it'd get that wily in here, I would have gotten a Roadrunner. Get it? Coyote, wily, wily, Looney Tunes. I'm dragging this bit on too long. All right, then, I'll make this short and sweet. Good night. Build mistrust amongst your local institutions and stay hydrated, everybody. And be sure next time to tune in right here at MCTVHD on YouTube. That's the homepage. Thank <laughs> you.